Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship. It's always a joy to see you. And thank you, everybody, who is joining us virtually this morning, whether it's right now or maybe later this week. We're happy to have you with us. Uh, just some quick announcements. We have the Messenger subscription renewal coming up, so talk to Audrey Bowman about that. Um, there are some wish list items for Camp Mardella and Shepherd Spring. So if there's anything of interest that you would like to help provide for these two camps, uh, talk to the witness team about that. Uh, there's also details in the bulletin about the annual conference witness to the host city. So they will be buying school supplies and clothing. So you can read more details about that. Uh, but the witness team has chosen some of the items from the list of their needs to, to list so that we can, um, the collection box will be in the narthex. And there is a sign-up sheet in the back for the father-son friends breakfast. So fellas or wives of the fellas, please make sure that uh, you are on the list if you can attend so we know much, how much food we will need to get. And also the m, m meeting is Thursday, June 9th, and Stacy will be out of the office this week. So if the, uh, voicemails and what's not are a little slow to be responded to, Pastor Scott and I aren't used to always checking the voicemail because Stacy does such a good job. So we apologize if it's slow, but we will answer all that and keep in track. But she won't be there this week. And I believe that's all the announcements also there is a district-wide worship service happening at oakton church of the brethren next saturday it is an anointing service so anybody and everybody is welcome and there's more information out on the district board if you'd like to read those details if somebody needs a ride let us know pastor scott and i are going with the kiddos so we have a few extra seats it just might be a little bit of a noisy ride all right, let us now prepare our hearts for this day of worship. As we move into this time of worship, um, we had an initial plan for our service this morning and we kind of completely rerouted uh, midweek and we are inviting the time for a more prayerful worship service this morning. So the graduates that we were going to be recognizing today uh, and our wonderful musical talents, uh, that will be next Sunday. Uh, but instead, let us just take a deep breath and be present during this time as we uh, move into this space of worship. Please rise now for our call to worship. Praise God in this sanctuary. Praise God in the mighty hands. Praise God for God's acts of power. Praise God with the sound of the trumpet. Praise God with the heart and the lyre. Praise God with the timbrel and dancing. Praise God with the strings and 
Praise God with the clash of cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, you are bigger than anyone can imagine. You stretch from these church pews to all across the world, from those grieving in Texas to those suffering in Ukraine to the birds singing in the jungles. We praise you, O Lord, for your majestic kingdom and allowing us to be a part of all that is. We pray for your sacred presence upon this time of worship here in this space and with those worshiping from home. We pray that our time in worship brings us to a space of lament, recognizes that heartache is real, but also brings us to know that you are always present, striving to use us in the glory of your name. We are not here to save the world. That is not possible. But let us take this time to know this world is in your hands, and we pray that we can somehow bring your light to the spaces where darkness glooms. Be with us as we worship you. In your holy son's name we pray, amen. Let us now sing together our first hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you are our creator and sustainer. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. And so we look to you whenever we are in need, trusting in your love and your abundant goodness. Lord, there are many that we lift to you in prayer this morning. 
We pray for the friend of Joan and Jeff, Corey Brown, who recently had surgery to remove a tumor and is still in the hospital. We pray for Sue Albaugh and Shirley Altivator, Ruth Aukerman and Roy Black, Tony Clark, Suzette Dotterer, Sean Eiler, Sandy Grable. We lift to you Melissa and Rick Green, Byron and Jenny Grossnickel, Donna Healy, Joe Hughes, Thurston Myers, Effie Pullman, Janet Reister. We lift to you the family of John Sater, her Donnie Smith and Elizabeth Snyder, the family of Donna Steiner, Mike Straub, Lyle and June Stutzman. We lift to you the family of Ruth Thomas, for Sharon Weeks, Paula Weibel, and Dot Hesset. Lord, these are the people in our lives that we name this morning, but there are also many that go unnamed on our hearts, and we lift each and every one of those to you. Holy God, as you once fed the hungry crowds with five loaves and two small fish, we ask that you would again fill those who are empty this day. Pour out your spirit on all who hunger and thirst. We pray for those who are physically hungry, whose stomachs are empty, who are facing critical food shortages, who are suffering the effects of malnutrition and starvation and watching helplessly as loved ones die. Pour out your spirit so that they may be filled. We pray for those who are empty emotionally, who are lonely and long for compassion and love, who are caught in the grip of depression or overwhelmed with grief. Pour out your spirit so that they may be filled. We pray for those who are spiritually empty, who are troubled but don't know where to turn, who long for purpose and meaning but don't know where to look, who need you but do not yet know you. Pour out your spirit so that they may be filled. God, we praise you for your abundant gifts in our lives. Pour out your spirit on us as well. Fill us with your compassion and love so that we would willingly share some of our abundance with those who have need. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who came so that all of humanity might come to know the abundant life that comes from you. Amen. Holy God, these gifts are given to you this day. May they be seen, may they be used, may the giving of this congregation serve thy kingdom come. Amen. Now I would like to invite up our praise band to um, bring us the number Faithful by Chris Tomlin.
Now please stand as you're able for hymn number two, Healer of Our Every Ill.
So this morning we are going to offer a guided prayerful meditation through scripture and time of silence and music. So I pray that we just take this time to open our hearts, our minds, our souls, uh, and be present for the Spirit's movement. A reading from Psalm 38. Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly to help me, my Lord and my Savior. Isaiah 54. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. In Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your heart, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So often when we grow through our days and weeks, it can be hard to find things to take joy in. Whether it's our own ailments, sicknesses, physical injuries, loved ones in the hospital, war in Ukraine, school shootings have become something that happens. They always shock us, but these acts of violence have become something that we recognize, something we've seen before. So many of those are uh, us are in the hospital suffering We love to talk about praise and glory and honor, but there are times we just want to call out to God, when? When is all of this going to go away? When will the violence stop? When will these viruses and diseases stop ravaging our people? When will we stop being afflicted? When will the traps and stumbling blocks laid before us go away? When, oh when, Lord, will this world be made right? Let us take a moment of silence to speak to God about the pain and affliction around us. Speak to God and meditate on the pain and lament of what we so often experience ourselves and go through. Call upon God for that unfailing love and peace that God so willingly gives us, but is sometimes so hard to see. Let us pray.
a reading from the book of Acts, chapter 1. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles for whom he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the time or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him from their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, People of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward the heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Do you ever wonder what must have been going through the disciples' heads at the time of the ascension? The risen Christ had been walking with you, talking with you, present with you in your daily routine. And then in a flash, he starts floating up into heaven, vanishing from sight. They must have been in complete awe, complete awestruck by the majesty of it all. Jesus ascending to be with God in heaven. Christ victorious and rising to be with God. But once the shock and awe of it all wore off, they were alone. Of course, you can say they weren't really alone. After all, there was a whole group of other followers with them. But suddenly, the responsibility on this earth for proclaiming the word of God fell not on the shoulders of Jesus, but on the people, on you and me, on these disciples. Suddenly, it was the people that must discern the will of God. The people are to lead until the return. The joy of the, of the ascension, mired by the stress of whether or not you are worthy, whether or not you are up to the task. The important thing to remember is God left it to the people. God trusted humanity with his word. And in the end, we are stewards of this earth until Christ returns to restore this world again. Now take another minute to meditate and pray on the responsibility we are left with. The joy of the risen Christ ascending to heaven and a sense that our Messiah will return and restore the world to end the brokenness around us once and for all and heal us all. Take time to consider our victory in Jesus that is promised and assured to one day happen.
Jesus be the center be my source be my life Jesus Jesus be the center Be the fire in my heart Be the wind in these sands Be the reason that I live Jesus, Jesus Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. Salah. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord, with the sound of a trumpet, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God is King over the nations. 
God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. The imagery of celebration in this psalm is just magnificent. We so often feel our joy and worship, but it never, it never quite seems to fit the standard or just the spectacularness of who God is. Trumpets sounding, shouts of joy, singing praises, a congregation loudly finding joy in their creator God. We were made by God and for God to worship God, to be with God, and to celebrate with God. This isn't often the loud sounding style of worship you find on a Sunday morning with a brethren congregation. But that doesn't mean that the glory that we share with God is huge, is magnificent. Even amidst the heartache and the suffering that is so real in this world, God is still there with us. Jesus may have ascended to the heavens, but we are here now with the responsibility to bring glory to God. How do you praise God? How do you celebrate the Holy Trinity that is with us always, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer? We were built for so much more than who we often live out to be, to be images of our almighty and sovereign Lord. Let us take a moment to consider how we can lift up our individual voices and our own energy to work towards the glory of God, to the glory of the one that made us to be holy as God is holy.
Today we have taken time to pray, to praise, to lament, to consider the victory in Christ Jesus. I'd like to close by offering a more corporate word of prayer. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Gracious God, our creator, Jesus Christ, our redeemer, and Holy Spirit, our sustainer, we call out to you this day. God, you are worthy of all matter of praise and of honor and glory. The majesty we witness daily in our world, the majesty of your creation, is unparalleled in our witness. The tree and flowers, birds and bees, mountains and rivers, all that we see is good and part of your design. Yet for all your power, as an omniscient and omnipotent being, you still have time for us, O oh God, all of us. God, you love us. What are people that you take such account of us, that you love us and that you save us? We are given the opportunity to be in a relationship with you, O oh God, and that is far more than we could ever imagine receiving. But God, that relationship requires us to be real, to call out our pain and our lament to you. For we see injustice, we see pain, we see war, we see shame, we face affliction. And through all we know, you are in control. We cannot help but be exhausted, angry, and uncontrollable sometimes. For all that we have said, O oh God, we will never forget that your son Jesus came to this world to teach, to love, to be a friend, to set an example, to be a martyr, to be a Messiah, to be a Savior. Creator, Redeemer, Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, we long for a relationship with you. And to see your kingdom prevail, change this world, and bring upon us a new creation. One of beauty, love, and peace. We pray this in your name, O oh God. All the names that we have to call you, we pray under them. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able for our third hymn. My life flows on.
storm can shake our inmost calm, while to that rock we are clinging. Since Lord is love, since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can we keep from singing? <laughs> 